Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and in this video I am going to explain to you how you can build a six-figure social media marketing agency in just four hours a week. No, I don't waste no time. Okay guys and welcome back to the video and before we begin I just want to apologize for the clickbaity title and the clickbaity introduction because to build, basically build out a six-figure social media marketing agency that allows you to work on it for just four hours a week is extremely uh, difficult and very hard to achieve and with that said, it's not impossible and I've got a few examples and stories from basically my past where I have done it and, you know, basically kept it at a consistent level where I'm not losing business or anything like that. But, you know, with that said, it is something that you need to strive for rather than have like from the start. But if you give me the next, let's say, five to ten minutes, I will explain to you how you can set systems and certain structures in place within your agency that will make it possible for you to work on the business rather than in the business. So, like I said, um, there have been times where I have had the four hour work week uh, lifestyle, but if I look to how I am working now, um, I get up at quarter to seven, and my work day starts at around eight o'clock in the morning. Um, prior to that, so I get up at quarter to seven, I've got my morning routine, which I do not consider uh, working because it's literally just like self-improvement. I will listen to audio books, I'll go for a morning walk, do my morning little bits and stuff. So that for me is not considered work. What I think is work is basically like the actual deep work, working within the business, you know, setting up systems, etc. Um, and my sort of work day will end at around 2 to 3 p.m. But that does not mean that I stop working because I actually work until 8, 9 o'clock at night. And it's funny because we laugh about this within the team because everyone sort of has the same mentality. We all uh, get up early. We'll start work at, like I said, around 8 o'clock. Uh, we have the morning check-in, which is 8 o'clock UK time, which is actually 9 o'clock for me. Morning check-in, and we'll go over all the bits that need to be done that day. And we'll be finished, like, fairly quickly. Like, we'll smash through the actual to-do list, things that need to be done. And like I said, more often than not, it will be setting up systems, uh, analyzing the systems, stress testing the system, you know, just seeing, you know, how far can we push certain systems and processes before they start to crack, you know, before we need to, um, you know, basically restructure it and pivot. And like I said, we'll be finished fairly early. And then once you've finished your to-do list, it's like, okay, great. Now I can start doing things that I want to do. And we'll continue to work on the business, but in different ways. And it's like, the, it's like you know, there's, there's no like shackles. You can just do what you want, but it is always business related. And I will continue to work until eight, nine o'clock at night. So let's say I have a 12 hour work day and that will be basically six days a week. So on uh, Saturdays, which is actually today, I will not work as um, as hard. You know, I will literally like, sleep in, relax a bit more. Um, I'll record the YouTube video like I'm doing right now, which is still considered work, but in my eyes, it's not. You know, this is something that I get to do, not something that I have to do. And on Sundays for me is basically a day where, again, I lie in and I focus on the coaching. So I will basically reply to all the messages that I've gotten. Um, I will you know, look at the course, the program, is there anything that I need to add to it? If there is, then I'll record that on Sundays. And of course, we've got the weekly live calls on Sunday, which I prepare for as well. So Sunday is like a bit of a, a coaching day. Saturday is a relaxation day where I'll, you know, basically get my personal brand stuff done. And then through the week is where I actually work on the agency. So like I said, it's a 12 hour work day. Uh, definitely not the four hour work week, but there have been times where I've, I've done that. But there have also been times where I've worked like literally 60, 70, 80 hours a week and almost to the point where I'm feeling burnt out because I didn't have the systems in place or I just really needed to, to grind it out and to, you know, work hard to put a certain system in place or whether, if I set myself a extremely ambitious uh, goal of, you know, doing something, then you know I will work hard to order that. For example, in uh, January, actually no, it was December because I was around the Christmas period. I recorded ten modules a day for the entire month. Like I, I think I got up to, um, actually no, it wasn't the entire month, but I think I got up to like 125 videos, uh, which are for a affiliate marketing course of a friend of mine, Colin Dice. Um, 
for Dice University, I recorded all of the ClickBank videos and 125 modules in the Christmas period and I just wanted to smash it out so literally I've recorded um, 10 videos a day for a, quite a very long time and like I said that was getting to the point where I was almost being and out but you know there will always be times like that so in order to get to the four hour work week which I actually had the last time I, I uh, consciously had the four hour work week was in August to Sep no actually yeah August to the end of September 2019 why because I was traveling uh, in in the states you know we went from um, so basically I traveled from the Netherlands where I'm based now to New York chilled a few days in New York then we got a flight from New York to LA and then from there we uh, rented a uh, basically rented a car there was, there was six of us um, I just want to quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that I have a free social media marketing course and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So basically what I've done is I have created a custom audience with Google Ads. Uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where I basically give you the direct link to download this course. So it's an unpublished link on Teachable which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel. So if you want a free social media marketing course all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements. So without further ado, let's hop back into the video. And from LA, we went down to San Diego, then we went towards uh, the Grand Canyon, uh, basically you know, doing a bit of just literally just like going from little town to little town, just seeing what's there. Ends up in a little random town called Prim and a little random town called Beatty, just outside of Death Valley and you know Vegas, all that lot. And we basically slowly made our way uh, through Yosemite, through Death Valley. We ended up in uh, San Francisco, and then we all said, guys, you know. Uh, it's time to go home, you know, we, we've sort of had enough and then from there we booked a flight um, to the Netherlands again. But anyway, while I was uh, on that road trip, I was still basically working and because I set up these systems and I had everything structured where all I needed to do was oversee the processes, um, my, basically my days consisted of uh, like a 15 minute check-in with the team, making sure everything was in place and on the whole I worked about four hours a week. So. Whenever we had Wi-Fi, because obviously, you know, for those of you that are familiar with the national parks in the US, there is no signal at all. Um, and every now and again, you'll get a little point where there is Wi-Fi. And uh, I, when I do have Wi-Fi, basically, I'll whip out the laptop and I'll you know, get a bit of work done. And like I said, it's mostly just checking in with the team, checking if we had quite a lot of um, lead generation ads uh, or clients, sorry. And basically just checking, you know, are all the basically the, the automations the zaps etc set up correctly are the clients happy you know I, I used to check my email and slack as well just to make sure that there's not nothing urgent um, happening at the time and basically the way i structured that was i looked at every single pillar so the four pillars within social media marketing client outreach is that automated is that outsourced for me at the time i basically paused the outreach why because we were sort of capped out in terms of clientele and because i knew i was traveling so in june and july uh, we ran ads for the agency got a shit ton of uh, leads and a shit ton of client calls etc so we had an extremely full pipeline and for me that was enough at the time i said okay uh, we've got this pipeline, we'll nurture the pipeline, but other than that, we won't actually actively you know, do any outreach. We'll stop the ads because you know, I'm not actually going to be there to take any sales calls. I uh, consciously did not want someone else to take these sales calls because I did want to oversee that process and I didn't want to take on any more clients because like I said, I was traveling and I didn't need that. I didn't have that like, financial incentive to, um, you know, to actually go out and get more clients because I was happy with where I was at the time and I knew that um, for those of you that are familiar with, you know, basically the big client that I landed 10k a month, I knew that that was coming because we already signed all the paperwork for that. So I was happy with outreach being on pause. Then the sales, well, if there's no outreach, then there's no sales needed. So basically it was just those last two pillars, which are uh, project development and project management. So the clients that we have, you know, is the communication on point? Is that a set up? Do we have team members replying to our clients? We did. All I, did, all I needed to do was make sure that everyone was basically getting replied to. So I was in the CC 
on the emails or I was in the chat on Slack and I could see you know the clients uh, questions are being answered then obviously you've got the product development where you know we're actually getting the results for the clients like I said we had lead generation clients are they getting the results are the leads coming in is the cost per lead below you know basically the KPIs that we want if so then leave it at that if not message a team member to basically you know set up uh, new ads or change the creative or basically just analyze the business manager and see if there's anything that they need to do to improve then check all the automations are the zaps set in place are the clients getting notified when a new lead comes in are the customers getting notified whenever they become a lead and so on and so forth and the same goes for e-commerce uh, we had a we had two econ clients at the time and again it was basically to make sure that the return on ad spend was at a point where you know they were making a profit and they set kpis for us as well so for example if the return ad spend needs to be two but we said the return ad spend or they wanted the return ad spend to be three for it to scale then we made sure that okay we don't go below two and we try and aim for three you know for as long as possible so that is basically how we did it and all i did prior to that was i looked at the business at a, as a whole looked at the processes and removed myself as a bottleneck you know within each and every process so for you that for, for those that want to basically achieve the four-hour work week like i said you will need to have systems in place you will need to have processes in place because it will be difficult if you don't have that so uh, for example with the coaching we now have two coaching students that will hit six figures this month which is absolutely great and i'm extremely proud of that as well and um, there is one of those coaching students that um, is at 7.5k a month recurring which is almost basically at the six figure mark and uh, he's basically capped out in terms of work and his pipeline is suffering because he is actively working in the business and the way i i own because obviously i'm very um I'm very actively helping out, etc., within you know my coaching clients, um, and I know that it's front-heavy the way his clients are set up. So he, he builds the funnels as well, and obviously gets a fee for that. Um, so I know that once those funnels are done, basically his workload will drop and his pipeline will increase because he can do more outreach, or you know we can basically switch on the system that we've shown them uh, to continue doing the outreach. But you know as of now, like I said, he is sort of capped out for. Uh, the next few weeks and that is basically what you want to avoid because you want to avoid yourself being actively working in the business and what you basically want to achieve is that you're all you're doing is basically just um you know flicking the switches turning on the cogs etc and just seeing what happens so okay if i put an extra i don't know fta on outreach what happens then if i switch on the ads for outreach what happens then if i put a um, data miner for the outreach what happens then if i have a closer to get in the sales what happens then what happens if i focus on one niche at a time what happens if i focus on multiple niches at a time and so on and so forth okay so you're constantly testing and seeing you know where in your business you can actually optimize improve and like i said remove yourself from the process for those who are interested in like lean business etc uh, google six sigma and google like i said the lean business structure and just do a bit of research into how they analyze their businesses and how they optimize the business so that they no longer need to work in the business and they can just work on the business and when i mean what i say when i say on the business i mean they are looking at the business as a whole no it's like it's like there's a conveyor belt in front of you and you've got two people on the conveyor belt and there's basically you know there's products coming in and person one uh, i don't know puts the packaging in place and person two puts it or takes it off the conveyor belt and puts it in a box you are standing about two feet or let's say six feet away from the conveyor belt and you're just looking at the process as a whole and what you're basically doing is okay looking can i increase the speed of the conveyor belt can I remove a person from that conveyor belt? Can I add an additional person to the conveyor belt? Can I have more products on the conveyor belt? And so on and so forth, okay? So you just need to analyze the system and see, okay, how can I optimize this to the best of its abilities? And once you're able to do that, you can remove yourself from the process. And like I said, you will achieve that four hour work week. Now, for those of you that found that really interesting and actually want my help within you know the, your agency so that i can basically look at your business and show you how you can do this how you can implement these systems i do have my own uh, coaching program where i literally take you on as a personal client and i will work 
in your agency and help you build it up from the inside out. It will be linked in the description box down below. What I basically do is I'll hop on a free 15 minute consultation call with you where you basically look at your business, where it is now and where you want it to go and see if I can basically help you get from A to B. If I can, I will offer you a place in the program. If I can't, then we basically you know separate or part ways and you know there's no hard feelings. So there's no strings attached. Um, and that is basically why I have these uh, 50 minute coaching calls. Sometimes I'll have my head of operations, Elliot, take these calls as well when I'm basically working on uh, the agency or if I've got like, a side project that I'm working on. But like I said, I also take these uh, coaching calls as well. So that is all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it made sense for some of you. Um, this might be a little bit uh, far-fetched, but then again, you know, it's, it's not rocket science. So for some of you guys you might think, you know, this is um, very, very easy and simple, but sometimes it is hard to think simple and to keep it simple because, you know, I see a lot of business owners that will, you know, implement all these automations and processes from the start and everything will be automated, but there won't be any traffic. You know, the, the tap will be switched off and I'm like, you know, you need to um, think, uh, think or look at it from a logical standpoint and make sure that everything is put in place properly before you start working on all these automations, etc. And it needs to be automated in such a way that it doesn't limit what you want to do. So for example, we have automations in place, but if I want to pivot, if I want to change something, we can do that by like flick of a switch. For example, we were testing out a one euro trial with uh, the coaching program because I know my coaching program is it's spot on. Like I'm extremely proud of it. Um, but what I've noticed is that it, it's difficult to convince people that the coaching is what they need. Why? Because there's an upfront investment needed or they are basically you know attached to a, a payment plan and there is, you know, there are a lot of people offering sort of a similar product or coaching, etc., uh, out there. So it's it's difficult to have a unique selling point from there. But I know, even from the people that have enrolled in my coaching, that have been with all these other gurus before and have come to me, and I've realised that you know my systems are much more streamlined, etc. That is how I know that my coaching program is really, really good. But it's convincing you guys, for example, that. You know, this is the coaching program for you if you know we are a right fit. So I was testing out the one dollar trial. Uh, so you basically get everything you want or you need for uh, seven days. If you like it, you continue. If not, you know you cancel and then you know no hard feelings. Um, and for us to be able to do that, like that literally took me two hours to restructure that entire process to test it out. And that is what I also mean with lean. Okay, so you don't want these optimizations or automations to limit your uh, ability to make changes like that okay so that is all i've got for today hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and you like to see more of this uh, please leave it with a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you all in the next video